This is a description of the Hazy Research Group collaboration with the IceCube South Pole Neutrino Observatory. I'm going to describe our software, which runs inside the IceCube Neutrino detector and has been used to process 20 billion particles and identify 20,000 neutrinos. The IceCube detector is a detector located at the geographic South Pole, and it looks for neutrinos. The detector is contained in a gigaton of ice, as shown, the ice surrounding the detector is two kilometers tall. A picture of the Eiffel Tower is provided for scale. The detector itself is composed of 86 strands of sensors, called as strings, that are buried in the ice. Each string contains a vertical line of sensors, each of which detects light. From the detected light, our goal is to reconstruct information about particles. To understand how we do that, we need some physics. When a neutrino travels through the ice, it sometimes interacts with an ice molecule. This interaction generates a new particle, which travels through the ice, releasing photons, or light, which is picked up by the light-detecting sensors. Unlike other mundane particles, neutrinos can travel through the Earth. By pointing its sensors down, the detector uses the Earth as a filter. I'm now going to show you what a detection looks like. The red line indicates the path of the particle as it moves through the detector. Each time a photon is detected by a sensor, the time and position information of the photon's detection is recorded as a data point. Over the particle's lifetime, a series of data points is collected. From this data series, the detector reconstructs the path of the traveling particle, illustrated by this green line. This reconstruction is then fed into a filter that checks if the reconstruction is upgoing or downgoing. Since all upgoing particles are neutrinos, reconstructions that are upgoing are retained by the filter. In our research, we developed ways to improve the filter's accuracy. Our primary insight is that the data is heavily contaminated with outliers and noise. For example, in this event, this data point clearly is an outlier, and its presence in the data series lowers the accuracy of the reconstruction. Our solution was to use robust statistics to develop reconstruction algorithms that can operate in noisy environments, as well as identify and discard outliers. The results of our research are that the neutrino filter accepts 10% fewer erroneously classified downgoing particles and 1% more correctly classified upgoing particles. Our software currently operates at the detector at the South Pole and processes about 250 million events every day and identifies about 8,000 neutrinos per month. Thank you to the graduate school, Francis Halzen and Gary Hill, and the IceCube team. Also, we would like to thank all of our sponsors.